the ability to cut the DNA where you want has revolutionized the life sciences. We can now easily edit genomes as desired, something that before was hard or even impossible. Today, CRISPR-Cas9 is a common tool in biochemistry and molecular biology labs. It's also used in plant breeding and for novel treatments of human diseases. I feel uh, extremely uh, honored uh, to receive uh, this uh, highest recognition uh, from Sweden. Uh, I think surely of my uh, former team in Vienna and at Umeå University who contributed to this uh, great discovery. I also think of my, all my colleagues of the CRISPR field and uh, all the scientists who have uh, really done a fantastic job to bring this technology uh, further uh, that uh, allows now to have uh, a genome engineering uh, technology, a very versatile one, uh, that is used uh, by multiple scientists <laughs> all over the world to modify uh, genomes of cells and organisms. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a great discovery and I'm uh, very happy to be one of the pioneers. I find it for sure uh, extremely nice that uh, the award is, is going for two women. I think this is the first case uh, ever seen for the Nobel Prize. I think it's, it's quite also reflective of uh, what you see nowadays. One has always to keep in mind that in general, uh, Nobel Prizes are awarded 20, 30 years after the discovery. And this discovery uh, is only eight years ago. And it has bloomed uh, ex extremely, uh, extremely. So it, it, everyone is using now the CRISPR-Cas9 te Cas technology. And I think it's just reflective of what is happening in our days, meaning that uh, work is uh, scientific work involves collaborations and, and you know we collaborate with scientists we think we should collaborate with whether they are female scientists or male scientists here it's just happened that it's two female scientists and it's quite reflective of what is happening in all this I hope it will remain as such but it's reflective of the fact that science becomes more modern and involves more uh, female leaders One of the great things about saliva is it's pretty easy to collect. We don't need to have personnel in full personal protective equipment doing the collection. A key question right now is will saliva be as good a matrix for testing as nasal swabs have been? And that's a question that we hope to answer with this study that we're running. So we're currently doing work to identify, first of all, how much viral shedding happens in saliva compared to in the nose, and then to figure out whether the actual saliva test that we're running is as sensitive as what we can detect when we're using nasal swab.